Hello everyone, Ryan here with Product Impressions. Uh, not a, strictly speaking, product today, but uh, I'm somebody who really needs to have a project to work on. I seem to do a lot better with life in general when I have something I can focus on. So I thought it would be interesting to take my old Pontiac Sunfire and make a screen for it, kind of like you would see in a Tesla. So big touch screen to have on there that can show GPS and information about the car, stuff like that. In researching the ways to do this, it starts out, you need to have the screen, of course, something to house it in, a way of connecting your phone to it for when you're driving and checking out uh, what's going on in the car. So we've got a 13.3 inch touchscreen uh, LCD panel. I decided to try it using just a, a picture frame to hold it all together. Um, if this doesn't work, I might uh, have to actually go to the hardware store and get some uh, aluminum tubing and what have you to make an actual frame for it to go to or be housed in. And we've got a little Raspberry Pi computer to connect the phone to the screen. Uh, yeah, we're going to put all this stuff together, see if we can't actually make a Tesla-like screen that'll go into any car. And if this all works accordingly, it's going to work as a screen in the car, a portable monitor for traveling, and its own computer system if you just want to use the Raspberry Pi. So going to be a versatile little thing. Let's put it together and see if we can get this to work. Looks like I'm going to have to go into round two of trying to put a screen in my car because, well, here's the little touch screen. Looks pretty nice. I put some automotive vinyl on the back of it and wrapped it around the sides and everything. Still have a little cutout here for all of the ports. It looks a little bit rough, but it's the first time that I've done anything with this. So overall, I'd say it's pretty good. Where I did run into problems is with the Raspberry Pi computer. This is the third project that I've tried using one of these uh, little computers and each one has gotten progressively more difficult. I don't know if it's because the amount of time between my trying to do it and when the instructional went out, but uh, my general impression has been if you're waiting more than a few months between whenever you see an instructional video and trying to do it yourself, it's probably not going to work. Uh, some little thing might get tweaked between the operating system, the software you're installing, and it just ends up not working. Uh, for those of you who do want to give this a try, I was using a program called PyKiss, P-I-K-I-S-S, to install Screen Copy, S-C-R-C-P-Y. The way it's supposed to work is you plug in your phone into one of the USB ports on here and it mirrors the screen. Couldn't get it to work. I tried it on three different phones, and so I know it cannot possibly be an issue with the phones. So it's an issue with the software somewhere along the lines with this. So now I guess I have another portable monitor, so I can travel with three screens now if I want to. But we're going to go on to round number two of trying to put a screen in the car, which is a big old uh, tablet mount. This is standard suction cup to put it onto the windshield, but uh, I have a tint on my windshield, so that's not gonna work. So we're gonna try and put this on using some, probably some cable ties or uh, some metal hook in some fashion to attach it to the front defroster for the windshield, uh, because, you know, you don't need perfect airflow through there for it to defrost the windshield. It's more important that it actually be putting out dry air rather than humid air. So we're gonna take this thing there we go. Basically, we've got the little mount itself. And the bar that it attaches to. And there's even a nice little uh, mount there to give it a pivot point. So I think by having the screen hang off of the edge of the dashboard, uh, there shouldn't be any issue as far as the amount of torque put onto the vent on, up near the windshield. So, uh, yeah, round two. Let's see if this one actually works. <laughs> All right, I've been doing a little bit more research as far as how to set up the tablet to be a purposeful screen in the car. And I've come across a couple of apps that I think are going to be really great. First off, I want to make sure that I can see navigation. That I feel is a must. But... You know, this is a lot of screen real estate. What else do I want to show? Um, so I have here a device called an OBD Link. Uh, this is a little 
dongle that just kind of uh, attaches to your car underneath every car, any modern car, I should say, there is a plug for you to connect to it in order to check the engine. Uh, it's called the onboard diagnostic link. Uh, you can just plug this in underneath there, connect by Bluetooth to your device, and you can check the codes for your check engine light or anything like that, just like a auto, auto parts store or a mechanic can check that and tell you why the check engine light is on. With something like this, you can get a lot more information from your car's computer. My car is fairly old, uh, 2004. It doesn't have much in the way of real advanced information that it shows. I've got speedometer, tachometer, fuel gauge, engine temperature, that's it. Uh, so if I wanna see anything else, I've used this uh, to check the O2 sensors to make sure that those are functioning properly. You can bring up pretty much anything that you want. Uh, also, another wonderful thing here, I found an app called the Split Screen Launcher. Uh, it is this one right here. And what you can do with that is set up apps to automatically open with a shortcut such that one is on top and one is on bottom. And it will work depending on how you rotate the tablet. So uh, in order to use that, let's just go ahead and launch that. It's a very simple interface. All you have to do is click down here, add a shortcut. You can give it a name. And then what app do you want on top? What app do you want on bottom? And that's really all there is to it. I set up one here that I'm just calling driving. I open that up and it's bringing up maps. And it is also bringing up the OBD link. So right now it is saying it is not connected to the device. Not surprising, it's not plugged in, it has no power. But so with this, I can bring this up and I have my navigation on a much larger screen than I would have on my phone. And I can bring up my diagnostics and other uh, information for the car. So. I think that this is probably a really simple and straightforward way to set up having kind of a Tesla style screen in just about any car that you want. So uh, time to actually see about putting this into the car. <laughs> All right, so here's what it looks like in my car currently. You can tell you, I've got a normal instrument cluster here, but there we have Google Maps and all the different gauges that just kind of come up by default with this particular scanner. We have a speedometer, tachometer, instant fuel economy, battery level, uh, engine temp down here, and I'm not entirely sure what MAF is because I haven't been driving around with it too much. So, uh, you can see here, it's a uh, really nice size, and also here is where I'm actually looking from, so it's not blocking my view at all. It does block one of my air vents, but uh, most cell phone holders now actually like clip onto air vents, so that's not really much of a uh, sacrifice. I've got another one there, so I can uh, go ahead and use that. Uh, in order to make sure that my tablet actually has a connection, I just turned on Wi-Fi hotspot mode on my personal cell phone, so that way I'll have an internet connection. And we've also got USB charger, uh, USB-C, I should say, USB-C here, and all of that is just plugged into, uh, there we go, uh, this little Belkin charger that ha takes two plugs and has, I believe it was, 35 watts of output, so it should charge both of these at a fast rate uh, just by having them both plugged in so I don't have to worry about the battery dying on either one of them. All right, so that is the basic setup in my car as of now. All right, so that is my way at least of putting in a uh, Tesla style screen into pretty much any car. I forgot to mention, I did use some basic cable ties. Uh, these are just seven inch Velcro straps that you can use to just kind of wrap around uh, cables or things like that. I used it to attach the tablet holder to the front vent that is where the defrost comes out. Uh, I figured that's a reasonable way to attach it since I have uh, a UV protectant film on my windshield so I can't attach anything to it. 
But uh, yeah, if you don't have that film there, you can just use the suction cup to stick it right on. But uh, th these are something that I found particularly useful to have around. Uh, a lot of the cables behind my computer are held in place with these things. Uh, for my TV setup, a lot of cables are held in place. I just always seem to find ways to use these. Uh, oh, when I'm traveling, uh, using uh, this to just kind of keep all of my cables to charge different devices and things like that just wrapped up nicely and stored in my suitcase. So yeah, always nice to have these around. All right, um, hopefully this has been helpful. I know it's not your standard product review that I've been doing, but uh, let me know if you give something like this a try, how it works for you and uh, yeah. Like, share, subscribe, usual YouTube stuff. Well, see you next time.